I think what we do in schools is tend to prepare you fairly well the first and second round Olympiads, and then we kind of say, if you get to the third round, well, good luck, you're on your own. That's what most of us teachers uh, will say. And uh, it, it does, as I've looked around Karate, uh, I haven't really seen a huge amount of training for third round Olympiads. Although I hear of training that happens in, in the Western Cape and maybe in KZN, um, but uh, not a lot around here. And so we decided, well, you know, we, we need to get our representation up a little bit better in Karate. And if you look at uh, the the percentage, the proportion of uh, students writing the third round, there's a definite weighting towards the West UK. So, um, well done to them, but we need to catch up. So, um, that's partly what these lectures are all about. Um, it's a start and, and a, you know, a start in the right direction. And uh, it's only six lectures. This first lecture will be just by way of uh, sort of an introduction and uh, just getting our minds in the right sort of place. Every lecture will take the form of an hour of sort of delivery of information and skills and that kind of stuff, and then another hour of um, practicing uh, Olympiad problems. So um, Liam Baker, wherever he is, I can't see him now. Where are you, Liam? Liam is going to be our sort of expert. Um, he's a, a past um, Olympiad participant, third round participant, and. Uh, and I am no participant, and uh, he'll be doing some questions with us later. Um, or in each section, in each uh, lecture, he'll be doing some uh, questions at the end of the lecture. So, um, for my part, uh, I'm the only teacher who's going to be presenting these lectures, so um, I'm, I'm completely out of my depth. But uh, I'm, I'm a sort of an Olympiad enthusiast, I want to learn as well, but I also want to prepare <coughs> students. Um, from what I observe of third round senior papers, I think there's a, there's a wide gap. Um, first of all, how many of you here are in grade 10? Yeah, quite, a, quite a few. You know, as I look at the grade 10 curriculum in schools, and I look at a third round paper, I, I see there's so much you haven't really learned yet in standard, ordinary maths that you actually have to catch up with in order to make a really good 10 attempt in the third round. Grade 11, how many of you are there here? Yeah, grade 11, there's a sort of a peak of enthusiasm at grade 11. And then grade 12s? Yeah, oh no, 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 I speak too soon. <laughs> well done. And also well done to Jeffy High School for, for uh, having such a big turnout here. Um, so the purpose of my lecture today is just to sort of breeze through a few topics that I believe are important. Um, it's not going to be all that high powered, but it's but you'll see some stuff that you haven't learned in school and won't learn in school. Um, but but is assumed by the Olympiad committee clearly um, when you write the third round. And then a little bit later, Liam is Liam. This is uh, Liam Baker, and uh, he's going to be doing a little bit of. Uh, well, he's also going to give a little talk about himself and and what his experience of writing the Olympiad, and then maybe a few questions at the end. Okay, so here we go. Let's, uh, without further ado, let's uh, look at some some uh, some maths and what, what the session's about. Okay, so the top 100 participants write the third round, and my contention is that maybe 15 or 20 of those 100 will make a good job of of uh, writing that third round, and the others kind of are just sort of thrown into it. They get through. They're great mathematicians, they're, they're probably at the top of their school, but when they read the problems, um, they're, they're really not prepared. And, and, and I would say that what I would like is for all those 100 to be actually, to be able to go into that session, that four hour uh, session of writing the third round, and come out of it at the end feeling, well, I had a good go, and uh, we'll see how things pan out. Maybe I'm not a medalist, but, but it's been a worthwhile experience. As I just said, there's, there's plenty of stuff that I think is assumed by the Olympiad Committee and, and probably is stuff that is done by uh, students who go on training camps, um, but it's not done in school and, and I think it's worthwhile just going over some of the things that uh, you should know. So, uh, identify certain terminology, topic skills, or formula that may be assumed by the Olympiad Committee, which is not generally covered. 
in this session, all I'm going to do is just going to cover some what I believe is basic knowledge that I think is useful for you to know. And as far as the teachers here are concerned, this is the sort of thing I, I, would, I would advise you to point your students in the direction of um, if they come to you and say, well, you know, how, how, can, how can you help me? I don't think as teachers, I think most high school teachers will, will quite happily say we would struggle with third round problems. Okay, but we do have a little bit more experience than the average student, and we can sort of say, well, actually, there's a, there's a platform of knowledge that you, you, you need to go in with, and then it's over to your own natural brilliance. Are you naturally brilliant? Why should you? <laughs> right, okay, in every Olympia, as you know, you always see the year, don't you? Would you agree there's always questions about the year? Year. So I thought just for a bit of fun, let's explore the number 2016. All right, so what is that? Who can tell me what 2016 is in prime practice? <coughs> Has someone already sort of worked with that? Yeah. Excellent. Okay, I didn't hear what you said, but is it that? 2016 is 2 to the 5 times 3 squared times 7. Okay, I wouldn't have taken you too long to do that. But how many factors are there in 2016? Do you know how to work that out? Is that something you know? Hands up, just, just give me a, how do you do it? Say so each one is the number of factors. Uh, on each bar multiplied by each other, plus one multiplied by each other. Exactly. So, so wait, two, two, two. No, no. okay, so you, you take the prime factor, and you take the powers of each, uh, of each prime, and one multiply those numbers together. And that's the, that's the way I mean, how many of you knew that? Just give you an indication. There's a couple of couple of people up there. It's it's the sort of thing you would learn if you're if you're somebody who does maths and yes. But it's not something that's general knowledge, and I think it's a really interesting result. Okay, so that's the number of factors. There are 36 factors of the number 2016. All right. How about the sum of all the factors? All right. So if you take those. 36 factors, do you know how to work out the sum of all the factors of a number? Well, there's, there's the rule. Can you, can you get the idea of what that's, what that's saying? Right, so you can see each of the prime numbers there, the 2, the 3, and the 7. Okay, so you raise, you raise each one to one more than, the, the, than is in the prime factor expression. You subtract 1 and divide by prime number minus one. Yeah, I don't know, how many of you have seen that formula? Yes, I've taught you something. Excellent. And this is quite a simple uh, expression, isn't it? So that's the sum of all factors of a number, uh, including the number itself. Okay, so if you wanted to write that in mathematical notation. Now, this is, I you're laughing because that looks like a really complicated thing, but the point is, you have to be comfortable with the notation of maths, don't you? What does that pi sign mean in this context, somebody tell me? Yep? Isn't it a geometric um, progression? Um, I wouldn't call it a geometric progression, but geometric is along the right lines. Correct. So you, you, you all know the sum notation. Well, this is the product notation. Okay, so when you see that pi sign, it means multiply all the numbers together. Okay, so you can see that the pi uh, to the mi plus 1 is the 2 to the 6 minus 1. Alright? Um, and then the pi sign means multiply them all for each prime factor. Alright? Yep, any questions? Okay, so that's a nice little, nice little result there. Um, to By the way, if you if you're swing the scribble stuff down, this will be available on the St. Stephen's website, uh, along with a video of this. And I've told them they have to make me look good and uh, correct any mistakes by you know, photoshopping and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, and here we go. What about binary? Yes, 2016 in binary, got a nice number. There are six ones there and five zeros. Do you all know how to convert a number into binary? as a basic skill. Hands up who knows how to do that. Yeah? Mm, kind of half of you. I would suggest, I'm not going to go through the whole process now, but I would suggest that you learn how to convert any number into any base. Alright, that, that would be a standard skill. 
how would we work it divided? All you do is you basically make, make each number column 2 to the power of. So the first column is 2 to the naught. Then you get 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3. And you ask yourself how many of each column will divide into the number. All right, so if it will divide in, you get a 1. If it won't divide, you get a 0. Okay, so that's how we do it. All right, but I don't have time to, to go over that right now. It's a cool question. You might have seen it. It's a nice question. It's one of my favorites. How many zeros at the end of 2016 factorial? So, anyone who knows the answer offhand? Or who can tell me what you would do to find out the number? And I'm not going to pick on you every time. Anyone? Yes, the back. Which, sorry, which school are you from? Horizon. Horizon. Okay. Tell us the answer. Uh, answer oh, you no, tell us how to do it. And there's always a bountiful number of twos, so you don't have to worry about that. So five times two will always give you a zero at the end. 